G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Show and Shed. Uh, gonna be doing some work on the disco today, again. Uh, gonna be doing the brake booster and the vacuum lines from the vacuum pump. Uh, if you're interested, I do have a little short video that I uploaded earlier, just inspecting the vacuum lines, uh, and i would just explain a bit of what was going on and the reason of why I'm changing this out now. So if you're interested, uh, I'll link that up here, so go and have a look at that now. Uh, just before I get into it as well, uh, I mostly do a lot of Land Rover uh, DIY type videos. Uh, it's probably my most popular stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in that and you haven't subscribed, then uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. So anyway, let's get into it. So before I get into all this, the part numbers I'm using, so the brake booster is a SJJ 5090 uh, part number I don't know whether you can see that there this was I don't know whether this has been changed or not previously but uh, it's the old one that's in there at the moment is an SJJ 5010 now, interestingly enough when I had a look at the new booster I may have the new number on the box but as you see it's still the old part number there so, I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, it is what it is, so it doesn't matter. And the vacuum line from the vacuum pump to the brake booster is an LR019703. Uh, so, first step I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the auxiliary battery, uh, because obviously we're going to get this brake booster out, uh, and the vacuum lines as well. So, let's get into it. So the auxiliary battery out of the way, uh, I'm just going to, the next step I'm going to pull out the vacuum uh, line here. Now I'm working on a hot engine so uh, <laughs> I recommend this is probably something better done while the engine's cold but anyway it is what it is, you know manage with the time we've got. But we've got to pull out this, uh, uh, the injector, what do you call it? Uh, fuel injector soundproofing, that's what they Land Rover calls it. Uh, just hold on with some little clips just onto the, uh, the fuel injector uh, wiring harness. vacuum line we follow just in here uh, okay. that's a lot of shadow there so uh, yeah real hard to see this this job so that quick connect that's on this little wobbling line there and there's one just to the left down below so it's just a couple of quick disconnects there so I'm just going to pull this one just to I was about to say hopefully remove the vacuum but there's nothing really there so all right, now comes the fun bit I don't know if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here but I'm kind of working blind myself so like I said earlier hot engine so this is definitely not much fun especially with the EGR coolant line right under my palm and more coolant lines for me to bump my fingers into in there so definitely guys a cold engine job if you can 12 seconds later all right so that's just just a little bit hot for me to get my fingers in at the moment so i'm going to start removing this battery tray now all my messy auxiliary battery wiring may make this a little harder than it needs to be but uh, hopefully we can manage now for this top piece is just a there's just a series of clips around the printer and that the there's two down this front face uh, I'm just using a long screwdriver just to hopefully 
pop it up. And try not to break it like me. But anyway, it is what it is. So I just snapped that one off there, uh, but it's just a little clip, so basically just trying to lever them up like that. Uh, just a little L shaped piece that slides in there. Just a couple of nuts, one down here, another three there. That should hopefully get that outside piece off. So that outside piece is off, but I believe we still need to get this uh, this one out as well because that brake booster needs to come forward and there's just not enough clearance in this back corner here. Uh, so, but in order to remove this next piece, we need to undo the ABS module and loosen that and that can be lifted up uh, out of the way. Now there's three nuts, there's one this side, Another side and another at the front. The ratchet 13mm ring spanner uh, is just about perfect for that. It's always one that's Tight right to the last thread. Another bolt, another nut right here. ABS modulator is connected via hard lines to the brake booster. I'm going to undo the master cylinder so that I don't have to stress all the uh, the brake lines and bend them and whatnot. Master is held on with just two nuts. I'll try not to bump the camera too much here. This nut is just one of those positions that's going to be probably a nightmare to get back on. Uh, so I've just lifted, got this uh, ABS modulator off its uh, mounting, and we just hopefully just lift this bottom tray up and out the way. It's probably one of those things if this air box was out of the way, that would probably make things a lot easier. Okay, so just pull them just up and out of the way a little. Just give a bit of space to get that bottom tray out. show you but uh, I'll definitely do another video I'll pull this you can see there's the oil already in there so there's obviously a fair bit of oil that is sitting in that uh, that brake booster so now that all this side is loose uh, I'll try, and, try not to stress all these brake lines out too much uh, we can all undo what's left of the brake booster from inside uh, the cabin, so we're gonna need to move around there. Okay, so this part of the video is probably going to be very difficult to film uh, while I'm doing the job. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll I think I'll just end up showing you where uh, 
or the items that need to be pulled out and uh, and what, where they are located and we'll I'll sort of do most of it the unbolting off camera it's probably going to be the easiest way I think so I'm just going to pull this lower trim out and then we've got the under tray uh, here so there's just a couple of screws here just obviously the right screw but yeah these are just like a little quick twist off and this tray just pulls out and the camera's probably going to be in the way but so just one little plug here for the little light switch which I can't seem to see because everything's in the way there we go and I'm going to knock the camera over so we're looking up under the dash there now basically on the firewall accelerator pedal uh, here brake pedal here uh, so you've got four nuts two at the bottom and two at the top so uh, as you can see that's going to be near impossible for me to film that while, uh, <coughs> while I'm working uh, hopefully oh, I don't know if you can see there's also a little pin that goes through right there for the uh, for the brake pedal on the master cylinder uh, there is a little clip oh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop it out and I'll show you how it works it's probably the easiest way once it's all on the bench uh, so as you can see here the all these nuts are removed and the pin is removed from the booster to the brake pedal now, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, clevis pin, or the pin that goes through the booster, has got this little clip, so you can't just push it off. It needs to sort of lift up at this end and off. Uh, you're in there sort of working blind almost, so it just pushes back on, and you just see it, just that uh, end hooks in, so just that side locks in, so in that little slot, you can see it just lock in. So that's pretty much all we need to do. Right, so, hopefully, now, with enough space, this should uh, slide out of the way. So I'm just going to, I'm going to sort of put a bit of weight on these to bend it out of the way a bit. That's probably one of those things that uh, to remove it really easily, just be undo the couple of brake pipes and get the whole master cylinder up and out of the car. But uh, yeah, humans being humans, we're kind of lazy and trying to avoid extra work by the extra work of bleeding, you know, so So you've probably just seen me yanking a device, just getting that little piece of the, the vacuum line out of the way first. And yeah, you know, that's probably not a bad way to do just to get those pipes up on top there so it gives you enough clearance to move everything out of the way. While I've been playing around with that, hopefully things have cooled off a bit. And I can just pop that quick connect off. I'm gonna have to move it out of the way. 
hopefully, guys, you can just see those two, uh, those two vacuum uh, quick connects there. Now that upper connection, we I'm going to remove this. So you can see there's those two halves there. We'll go over here. Now that upper one, we've got this little bag of parts here. So it's just a little spring and a little valve. So we need to be, apparently there's an orientation for the spring according to the uh, the refit instructions. Uh, we'll see, that obviously this valve has definitely probably got a, a specific way it goes. But uh, as we can see there, it's just a couple of clips. This whole thing should gently lift out. Now I'm not going to try and film close up of getting this connection out. It's just not going to be not going to play the game. Uh, I'm just going to end up with my hands in the way and uh, all that sort of stuff. So I'm not too sure whether this if I can twist it and get it out. But so just make sure we do this upper one and not the lower. I'm just going to try and prise these clips open with a with my screwdriver. I just had an interesting comment as well while I'm in here trying to undo this uh, just on the video where I was inspecting the vacuum line so the comment was uh, from Phil R so he basically said that uh, hi Shane you know thanks for your informative clips keep it up so yeah thanks for that Phil really appreciate it so he also lives in Perth he has having the same issue with his D3 uh, he said you may need to consider replacing the vac pump as this would be the source uh, of the oil uh, apparently the seals degrade and start to pass oil without that the problem is likely to repeat now I did respond to Phil but uh, yeah look 100% I would agree with that comment you know uh, there's obviously a reason why oil's getting through this vac pump and uh, and into the vac line so and, yeah when you think about it, it doesn't really make much sense the oil coming back up a, uh, a vacuum line so it's basically going the wrong way for, for the uh, the airflow but uh, so just while I was, I was just off camera a bit I just whacked a little uh, just a blank on this uh, bottom line while I'm playing around with it just so I don't get any dirt in the system but anyway back to the uh, the subject of the oil and the, the vac line uh, look as you can see this vac pump is sitting right here at the back of the engine like this is just I don't even really want to attempt this with the body on to be honest like to change that vac pump uh, one it's kind of an expensive part anyway uh, so yeah I, I, I don't know if there'd be any any benefit in changing it out for the pain that is there uh, what I'm going to look at doing is putting a, an oil catch can in this line. So I'm going to save this old uh, line that I've, I've pulled out. And uh, I'm going to basically use that quick connect that's over here. And uh, the idea is just to make a, a, a simple catch can. So hopefully we keep oil out of the new booster in the future. Uh, the other option, you know, if, if this problem does repeat, you know, you probably, is, is it worth doing this particular vacuum pump or would just replacing it with a, uh, a uh, an electric vac pump be suitable? So, you know, these are questions that are worthwhile answer, asking and, uh, you know, it could very well be a cheaper option. Alright, so I was just stuffing about off camera for a fair bit with this thing, so I've managed to just pop it loose, so I'm going to just pull it out, there's the top part, and to show whether, oh, there's a little valve in there, it sits quite deep down, I don't know whether it's just the little spring is, no good. So this is probably a good idea to, just to check things out with a mirror. If I can... Now I don't know if 
before I'll be able to get this with my just a pair of pliers and I'll see if we can pull it out and keep it in the correct orientation I don't know it's one of those jobs just sort of working blind and hoping for the best <laughs> eventually ah that's it that's it okay so and we can see the orientation that that's come out so I need to go back that same way for the new one now there's also a spring in there which we should be able to get out and there we go that's it there so I'm just going to finish off this little bit of the the reinstall so spring and the valve and the uh, connector and there's one little test to do to check that we're maintaining the vacuum and I might end this video here because I'm probably going to have enough footage to edit and deal with that'll, uh, that'll keep me going for a while so This kind of sits fairly deep in uh, that little spigot, so I might just drop this in exactly the same way as I pulled it out. Used to be sitting improperly. Now this should just be a matter of pushing back on, and we should hear it click in. And it's in place. Hopefully, all good. Part of the procedure for replacing this is to test the vacuum. So I'm just going to use this old piece of hose with the quick connect and that's just hooked up to my vacuum pump so I've got a vacuum gauge on there and uh, I'm just going to give this a start hopefully this little blank will be enough to hold a vacuum and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes yeah, waking up there so I can watch it when I start so the procedure calls for the uh, engine to be started for five seconds uh, should pull vacuum and then hold vacuum for at least five seconds after the, uh, the engine has been shut off so let's give it a start and uh, see how it goes And that's holding back in pretty well, so that's good. Hey guys, so we've just tested that uh, that vacuum pump and the little valve that we put in there, so that seems to be working uh, as intended. For those who are interested, that uh, was about minus 28 psi of vacuum, so I can't find any specs on what this pump uh, is supposed to do, but uh, that's what I'm getting it come out of this one, so. Uh, I'm going to finish off this video now, so I'm going to do part two is going to be the reinstallation of all the booster and the vacuum lines again. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you want to see the reinstall, uh, check out the next one uh, that will be next week. So until then guys, uh, I'll see you later. Cheers.